the central question of this handsome new report goes right to the heart of, of, I think, what a lot of us who have been working in this field are asking, which is, where are the boards? It's, um, anybody working in this arena, and we at the Aspen Institute, um, while CED was proceeding with their work on short-termism, we were convening a similar <coughs> set of players and looking at some of the qu same questions about what has to happen in this system to align business with the long-term health of society and why does it feel that we're kind of out of sync today and what has to happen to change that. And you don't work on this for very long without saying, coming back to this question of where are the boards. Um, and so as we produced our own work in that arena, we, we really thought of boards as an audience for that work. And I think CED felt the same and then felt, well, let's take this extra step and really focus in on boards and see what we might discover, both by looking at, at good practice, what's, what's happening now in the markets, and seeing if we can clarify some of the, the needs and, and um, demands on boards and, and provide some useful guidance in this arena. And I think they've begun to do that here. The hope here, of course, is not just that we avoid the kind of fall from grace, if you will, that we've been witnessing in the markets these last several years. And I would go back to, um, you know, early in, uh, in this decade as well. But to really, you know, if you look around and look at the extraordinary capacity, global reach, the problem-solving skills, the <coughs> distribution systems and knowledge that reside in the private sector. You simply can't help but hope we can bring business to the table in a voracious way to tackle our most complex problems. And so again, we come back to this question of boards that we at least were drawn to boards because, well, they seem to be able to sit above the fray of those dedicated managers who inevitably are pulled to uh, multiple objectives maybe, but specifically to the objective of, of um, producing regular profit. Um, and hope that those boards can, can provide this other perspective and help those managers lift up and, and raise their eyes and look beyond the quarter and think about the long-term implications and think strategically about the direction and think about, seriously, about this question of aligning the business with the long-term health of society. So that's what we at least hope. Um, Bill raised a question in his remarks about the timing of this report, and I had a similar thing ha happen yesterday where I was talking to a, a colleague on the phone, somebody in another organization, who's putting together a meeting in June on a similar topic about the future of, of corporations. And, he kind of said, you know, but enough for all of these voluntary efforts, you know. Now's the time for really weighing in and we, you know, we're going to need government regulation and we need it now and I don't want to talk about these voluntary efforts anymore. And I think the answer to that is yes, it, clearly we're all interested in seeing what kind of regulation comes forward here and that is in fact the question of the day, but that doesn't mean we don't need to be continuing to think deeply about business practice and what has to happen maybe in a voluntary basis from the business sector and where the leadership's <coughs> going to come from. I think you can't separate these two things and that you're not going to get good policy if you don't have engaged boards thinking about what that policy needs to be over the long haul. And so we think that these questions are especially critical today and hope, hope that we can help CED advance what it does best, which is build um, dialogue here. So let me just read a brief passage before we open it up to our, our very um, excellent panel today um, that at least was in the, one of the drafts that I actually uh, read as opposed to the nice, nicely bound one, so I hope it's still in there. Um, the urgency of action. Our central conclusion, the report says, is that corporate boards and the leaders they select must integrate relevant societal concerns, such as environmental and human rights considerations, into corporate strategy to strengthen long-term competitiveness and the sustainability of both the corporation and the society in which it exists. A successful framework requires a societal and business leaders view and treat each other as partners, not adversaries, 
Their actions and public communications should recognize their interdependence and shared goals. Elliot, is that still in? Okay, good. Um, so I think the question today that I would like to pose to the board, uh, to the panel that I'm about to introduce, is how we move from this wonderful platitude to reality. How are we going, what is it that has to happen? Why does this seem so hard? And what is going to have to happen at the board level? And what is it we in this larger <coughs> community of interested parties need to do to move boards in the right direction? And so today we have four terrific panelists, um, all four are keen observers of boards in their various manifestations, the good, the bad, and the ugly of boards. Um, and we are going to move from your left to your right here. So let me introduce them, if I might, in, those, in that order. Ben Heinemann, many of you think of as GE's general counsel. He's actually been out of there for a few years now, writing books and um, sitting in ver various fellowships at the Kennedy School and at Harvard Law School. But notably, he was the senior vice president and general counsel for GE from 87 until 2003. So sitting in that position, working closely with the board of directors, of course, at GE for a 15-year period of time. He retired there in 05 um, as senior vice president for law and public affairs, having broadened his role there and has been a terrific collaborator. His new book, High Performance with High Integrity, was just published in 08 by Harvard Business Press. And undoubtedly, he will bring some of those ideas into his discussion. Um, I'm hoping the fact that he is no longer at GE means that he can be very frank about GE today. Um, second uh, to my left, John Wilcox, who's chairman of Stolly Limited. Uh, John and I began working together when he was at uh, TIA CREF, where he served as senior vice president and head of corporate governance from 2005 to 2008. He continues, I believe, to consult with TIA CREF and with other companies. Um, prior to joining TIA CREF, as you see in the bio, he was chairman of Georgeson and Company, the U.S. proxy solicitor, solicitor but has over 25 years of, of deep um, experience in the field of corporate governance, and again, at TIA Craft and elsewhere, has been a keen observer of, of boards and many manifestations. And then we have two organizations today represented, first by Peter Gleason, who is the Managing Director and Chief Financial Officer for the National Association of Corporate Directors, NACD, which is really the trade association that is most directly concerned about the information and educational needs of members of boards of directors. and. He has served in that role and other roles at NACD for a number of years, but also brings to the table his own experience before that at Ernst & Young and also at ISS, now Risk Metrics. Again, an organization and an individual who has deep experience in this arena. And finally, Matt Orsag is another one of our colleagues on this, uh, this fellow traveling with aligning business to long-term interests senior policy anal analyst for the CFA Institute Center for Financial Market Integrity, has been doing um, a great degree of work from that post on <clears throat> looking both at their own industry, but also how that industry interacts with the wider field of business. Um, working on promulgating the Capital Markets Policy Group, corporate disclosure positions and policies and standards in this arena. And again, a, another one who can add a great deal to this discussion. So um, we've asked each of the panelists to open up with um, five to six minutes. Um, I promised them I would give them um, warning. So if it looks like it's going to be going beyond that, you will hear from me um, with, your, with your permission. Um, and, um, and then we will have some time to pose some general questions and then open it up to the room. So I hope that you will start thinking of your own questions and comments as we proceed. <coughs> 